Haley Hudson. I'm Michaela Yates. I'm Jillian Ollie, behind the camera. <laughs> and uh, we were grouped together for our beginning algebra final project. Um, so in this project, we were each asked to survey 15 different people. And in our survey, we asked six different questions. And everybody in the class had to do this as well. So our six questions that we had to ask people were, how many siblings do you have? Pick a random number between zero and 20. What is your favorite sport? Were you born in Arkansas? And then the last two questions were scale questions. So our, the people we surveyed had to answer between one and five, one being strongly disagree and five being strongly agree. The two statements were, we never landed on the moon and college education should be free. So after we all did our surveys, we came together and we found uh, some class-wide statistics and some group-wide statistics that we are gonna kind of compare and contrast. Okay, so I was gonna discuss the similarities between our class data, um, did we land on the moon and should college be free compared to our group data for those last two questions, um, which were questions that you either strongly agreed five or strongly disagreed one. Um, and those numbers appear to be very similar between just our group, or I'm sorry, the class and then our group. Um, I mean, for the first one, we have 1.38 and 1.36, one, one, and both four for the range at the bottom. So both of those questions appear to have very similar numbers and answers, which was interesting. <laughs> okay, um, and then I'm gonna kind of look at these three questions. First off, um, with the pick a number between zero and 20, um, the data is fairly similar. Uh, there's 9.92 for the mean for the class as opposed to 11.04 for a group. Uh, it's not super telling since it was just a random number. Uh, but yeah, those are fairly similar. And then our answers for what is your favorite sport were really overwhelmingly similar. Um, especially because we couldn't calculate mean, median, and range for qualitative data. So the mode or the answer that we got the most obvious for both often for class and group was football, like overwhelmingly football. Um, behind that, I think was like basketball and baseball. And then we had a few random outliers, such as bull riding. We had someone answer gambling, we had ice skating, gymnastics. So there were a few really random ones that were only ever mentioned once, but overwhelmingly it was football for group and class. Um, also, for the other qualitative question, were you born in Arkansas? The class and the group data both showed that most of the answers were no, which I thought was interesting since we were surveying mostly within Arkansas. I think it might have had to do with some of how we were surveying. You know, people were texting friends or Facebook messaging friends that probably lived and were born outside of the state. So that's how we kind of got the overwhelming amount of no's. Um, yeah. And then the last one is the number of siblings. And uh, the class data is a little bit higher when it comes to the number of siblings in our group data, where the mean is only 2.36 as compared to 4.073. But other than the mean, everything else is pretty similar. We had a bit larger of a range because we had quite a few people in our group data who had six siblings. Um, but for the most part, our group surveys had people with a fewer number of siblings. And I think it's also important to mention how the surveys were done. Jill, for example, uh, used Facebook for her survey. She posted a status with the questions and had people comment their replies. And she got her data really quickly, like faster than the rest of the group because people responded really well to that since pretty much everybody uses Facebook. But something interesting to note about that was when asked to pick a random number between zero and 20, she had a lot of sevens. Like she had like five sevens within her uh, group of 15. And we think it's 
probably because people unknowingly saw a seven in the earlier comments and put that down as their random number. So it really actually wasn't that random at all. Um, and I found the same thing when I used group text as opposed to asking people individually. When I asked individuals, they came up with really kind of random numbers. But when I did group text, the numbers were either kind of in the same range or they were the same number. I got a couple of eights and like a 10 and like a 12 when I did a group text. Okay, um, and then to wrap it up, uh, we're gonna talk about how surveys are used um, in the real world or in every day that maybe we're not aware of or are aware of. Um, so for the most part, um, we talked about Jill doing it on Facebook. So we do know that um, social media, internet, um, are very good like sources for you know to put out a survey and get answers or responses back quickly um for example i used to work at disney world and as you were exiting the theme park there would be someone who would ask you a survey and you would rate your experience um also you know you see them when you go out to eat or when you go shopping someone will ask you to take a survey so we do know that surveys are being used um, to rate your experiences at certain places um, for companies to get a better idea um, and quick information back to see um, where they need to improve and so forth. Um, what are there any other surveys I didn't mention or examples of surveys? Yeah, so like she said, there's a lot of real world times where we do use surveys. So this kind of taught us how to conduct a survey in case we ever need to use them in our jobs or whatever, which we will because she uses them in her job currently. <laughs> uh, so it was good to get like an introduction to surveys. Um, we also kind of learned how seemingly random questions can create data that correlates. But yeah, it was useful. I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks guys.